Thailand's justice system is failing. A new survey in February showed just how strong that failure is in the eyes of the people. A mere 5.7% of the respondents believe legal procedures are carried out justly and transparently. Will this significant lack of faith in the justice system begin to eat away at the rule of law? Thais widely believe there are certain groups in society who are far less likely to go to jail for a crime. These groups are predominantly among the rich and powerful. Police, the very upholders of the law, are there too. The public's opinion is well-founded. Between 2012 and 2015, a startling 27,000 defendants who were granted bail vanished into thin air. Yet it is because of a handful of certain individuals in particular, of such high profile, wealth and influence, have escaped justice and fled abroad with apparent ease that have served as hard-hitting evidence to the ties of how their justice system is failing them. Here we take a look at the most infamous of these individuals. Landing perhaps the heaviest blow was telecoms billionaire and former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra. Having been overthrown in the 2006 military coup while attending a United Nations meeting, he returned to Thailand only to flee abroad in 2008, facing charges of corruption, tax evasion, and abuse of power. It was a political crisis that divided the nation. The Supreme Court found Thaksin guilty on some charges, and from abroad Thaksin made use of his still considerable influence in country not least of all by allegedly bankrolling his redshirt protesters. Toxin remains abroad to this day. And a few years later, none other than Toxin's younger sister Yinglok would become prime minister. And eventually she too would of course end up fleeing the country in 2017 to escape corruption charges. Thailand's first female prime minister, Yinglok Shinawat, was voted into power in 2011. Immediately, her administration introduced a rice pledging scheme that would prove disastrous. The government lost 4.4 billion US dollars from the scheme in its first year, and the National Anti-Corruption Commission indicted Yinglok in the subsequent case, citing millions of rice farmers who were unpaid. Many figures in power were convicted over the scheme including Yinglok herself, who was found guilty of dereliction of duty. She did not show up for her ruling in late 2017, having fled the country a matter of days earlier. She was charged in absentia to five years in jail. Yet another politician, Watana Asawaheim, in 2008, would also take flight to parts unknown to escape punishment for illegal land dealings. Watana was assistant minister of interior affairs and leader of a political party. He would face charges of corruption over a wastewater treatment plant project in which he forcibly acquired private and public land that he then planned to sell. Watana was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment, but he too had already left Thailand, while the Klongdan wastewater treatment plant remains abandoned until this day. Next, we have Prasha Hopi Pit, a wealthy businessman who eventually got involved in politics and organized crime. This led to various charges against him in 2015, and he didn't show up to court, and hasn't been seen since. An MP of the Democrat Party, it was Brasha's dealings elsewhere that landed him in trouble, and he ended up facing charges of extortion and unlawful detainment, punishment for which his flight abroad has so far seen him serve no time. And then there's Brasha Manlinon, a multimedia tycoon turned politician, and part of a rich and influential family. He fled Thailand in 2013. Co-founder of the now disbanded Thai Rak Thai Party, with which Thaksin Shinawat first came to power, and deputy director of BEC, the company that runs Channel 3, Prasha was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment for malfeasance for the overpriced procurement of 315 fire trucks and 30 fire boats. Yes, he also disappeared to parts unknown. And even Thailand's sacred institution of monkhood has fallen foul of those who would abuse it for their own personal gain. 
พระธรรมชายโย or ชายบุญสุทิผล was abbot of the highly controversial พระธรรมกาย temple and president of the Thammagai Foundation. The temple was criticized for its extravagant ways, fundraising methods, and teachings, as well as its influence in politics. In 2015, authorities traced over 30 million U.S. dollars in laundered money to Thammagai Temple and Thammashayo himself. In 2017, Thammashayo became a wanted monk on the run. Ignoring the charges against him, attempts to arrest him turned into a 23-day standoff and cost an estimated three million U.S. dollars. Police were finally able to enter the temple, only to find Tamashayo long gone. The heir to the global Red Bull fortune is also a man on the run from criminal charges. Warayutu Witiya killed a police officer in a hit and run in 2012, and Thai justice has yet to catch up with him. Also known as Boss, Voriyut was found to be under the influence of drugs and alcohol after he dragged the officer's body for 200 meters along the road. While justice awaits them at home, some of these individuals have chosen to rub salt in the wound by living the high life on various foreign shores. Warriut has been spotted skiing in Japan, watching Singapore's F1 championship, and at his residence in London. Toxin also has a luxury house in London, a private jet, and a villa in Dubai. Ying Lok has been seen out in London and was recently in Beijing, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Singapore. So we are not here to judge these individuals. We are here to judge our own justice system. In other countries, such high-profile cases such as these that are televised nationwide, you know, in those cases, is there even a slim chance that these individuals will be able to run? Not likely, but in Thailand, it seems to be every single case. Earlier this month, the commander-in-chief of the Thai army admitted it was beyond the capability of Thai authorities to arrest Thaksin or Yinglak and that they had to rely on help from Interpol. Details of any coordination that has been carried out with Interpol are unclear. How are such high-profile individuals so easily able to escape the Thai justice system and to then live so extravagantly abroad in blatant defiance of the charges they face at home? Does the power lie with the Thai people themselves en masse to ensure that the justice system performs as it should, with fairness given to all and exceptions given to none?